Good day. My name is Megan Fountain, and I would like to welcome you all to the Stony Curl Tissue Loss Disease Identification, Assessment, and Treatment webinar hosted by the Perry Institute for Marine Science. Tanai Burrows, Candice McPhee, Taylor Walters, and I will be presenting today. We are some of the members of the Reef Response Team here at the Perry Institute for Marine Science, and we lead the fight against Stony Curl Tissue Loss Disease in the Bahamas by monitoring and tracking our coral reefs for the disease. First, we will talk a little more about our organization, then stony coral tissue loss disease, and then move on to the main topics, which are identification, assessment, and treatment. The Perry Institute for Marine Science is a nonprofit organization focused on conservation and restoration in the Bahamas and other Caribbean countries. We have been one of the leading research organizations in the Bahamas for over 50 years and continue to conduct programs based on education, citizen science, and preservation to help protect our oceans. Within our organization, a few of our programs are coral reefs, fisheries, coastal habitats, and community outreach. So, why are coral reefs so important? Coral reefs are one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world and our primary habitat for about 25% of all marine life. They safeguard a multitude of underwater life, serve as a feeding ground for predators, and are filter feeders, clearing the water of impurities while improving its quality. Some of the many ecosystem services that corals provide are protecting coastlines from storm surges and hurricanes that can cause erosion and flooding. They also act as a major source of food and income due to the fishing industry and have a major impact on our economy through tourism. So, what exactly is this disease that is impacting our coral reefs? The deadly disease known as stony coral tissue loss disease, or SKIDLD for short, was initially identified in 2014 off the coast of Miami and has since expanded along Florida's coast, having a severe negative impact on coral reefs. It entered our waters in 2019, where it was found close to a port in Grand Bahama. Since then, it has spread to other islands around the Bahamas due to its transmission through the water column, endangering our coral reefs. Although the exact cause of the disease is still unknown, if left untreated, the mortality rate of corals would likely be 100%. In this webinar, we will discuss how to recognize the signs of Skittle D, evaluate coral reefs, and treat corals that have the disease. In this section of the webinar, we will discuss the different characteristics, coral species vulnerability, and the similarities and differences that Skittle D has to other diseases. In this groove brain coral infected with Skittle D, the old mortality is what the arrow is pointing to in the middle and refers to the coral exoskeleton that is not identifiable and slightly covered in sediment and may have been dead for a few weeks or months. The recently dead coral is the white border in between the old mortality and living tissue and refers to the exposed white skeleton that is still identifiable and may have been dead for a few days. In several coral species, this may be bleached living tissue. The living tissue is the yellow colored part of the coral and is showing what the coral looks like when it is healthy. Although this area of coral is living, it may still be infected with the disease. The pale yellow colored areas of the coral are the lesions that may appear on coral species with the disease. Lesions may be observed simultaneously in one or several locations on a coral species, usually starting from the edges or appearing in patches in the middle between healthy tissue. The brown colored areas of the coral is the living tissue that the lesions may eventually spread to, forming a single large lesion. In some coral species, the disease's active location can be seen where the tissue is slowing off the coral colony, as indicated by the arrow pointing to the tissue loss. The brown colored coral adjacent to the tissue loss is the living tissue. The white exoskeleton behind the tissue loss has already been infected with the disease and may have been dead for a few days. In some species, coral bleaching may occur simultaneously with Skittle D, where the tissue can still be intact even though the affected area is white. The yellowish corals show that the area has been dead for a few days or a week. 
This white area is showing how the exoskeleton looks when it does not have tissue. The yellowish and brownish coral surrounding the white exoskeleton appears to be fleshier and plumper due to its undamaged tissue that may eventually slow off and show more of the white exoskeleton underneath. Here is a collection of images showing the disease in several coral species. The disease can look different in any coral species, but remembering and correctly identifying the characteristics makes it easier to recognize Skittle D. More than half of the coral species in the Caribbean are affected by stony coral tissue loss disease. In this section, we will talk about the vulnerability level that coral species have to the disease and what it means. When identifying Skittle D in a reef, it is important to understand which species are more vulnerable to the disease than others. These coral species are most likely to be infected by Skittle D first during an outbreak and can quickly die when infected. They are also primary reef builders and make up 95% of the reefs in the Bahamas. The highest infection rates are found in maize corals, brain, pillar, and star corals. Sadly, the pillar corals risk extinction due to the Skittle D outbreak. The outbreak has progressed at an alarming rate once the low vulnerability coral species have been infected. Finger corals are one of the reef builders that are not affected by the disease. It is also not a threat to acroporids like staghorn and elkhorn corals, but they have been threatened by another disease known as white band disease that has been drastically affecting their population since the 1970s. When identifying Skittle D, it's important to make sure what you see is actually the disease and not something else. Other coral diseases like white plague disease, bleaching, yellow band disease, white band disease, white pox disease, and predation all have similar characteristics to Skittle D. On this slide, Skittle D is in the picture on the left and white plague disease is on the right. White plague disease was discovered in 1975 in Florida and causes rapid tissue loss that forms lesions from the base of the coral, creating a sharp line adjacent to living tissue. This disease affects the brain, star, and plating corals. It can be difficult to tell these diseases apart, but Skittle D has lesions that occur on multiple locations all over the coral, while white plague has a defined borderline of white exoskeleton that only starts from the base of the coral. Skittle D is also way more aggressive and progresses faster than white plague with a rate of 5 to 40 centimeters squared per day, while white plague only progresses between 1 millimeter to 2 centimeters per day. Bleaching occurs when corals become stressed due to changes in their environmental conditions. A stressed coral will expel zooxanthellae, which provide the coral with food and give corals their color. Without zooxanthellae, corals lose their color and turn completely white, and with a decreased food source, the coral becomes more vulnerable to diseases. Although the coral is white, the living tissue is still alive and intact. With Skittle D, there is a loss of tissue and the underlying white exoskeleton is completely visible. Yellow band disease, also known as yellow blotch disease, is considered a disease that mainly affects the zooxanthellae that has a symbiotic relationship with the coral. When identifying yellow band, you should look for a pale yellow to white ring that is surrounded by dead or dying coral, and this disease only affects bolder star corals. Another disease that Skittle D can be mistaken for is white band disease. But it's very important to remember, white band only affects acroporous species such as staghorn and elkhorn corals. White band is identified on a staghorn or elkhorn that has a white horizontal band of necrosis starting from the base. The necrosis may resemble the white marks that occur with Skittle D, but Skittle D does not occur on staghorn and elkhorn corals. Since the introduction of white band disease, there has been a loss of about 80 to 98 percent of staghorn and elkhorn corals in the Caribbean, and in 2006, these species were added to the Endangered Species Act. White pox disease is also known as white patch disease in the Caribbean. It only affects elkhorn coral and is the only coral disease known to be directly caused by human bacteria. When identifying white pox, 
you can look for white irregular patches of lesions on an elk horn that can appear randomly anywhere on the coral. The lesions may look like the lesions on corals with skill D, but remember, skill D does not affect elk horn. Although predation is not a disease, it can resemble skittle D in certain ways. For instance, when the coral's living tissue is bitten off by predators like corallivorous snails, fireworms, and parrotfish, the coral's white exoskeleton is visible and adjacent to healthy tissue. The predator bites resemble the unusual bleaching pattern that occurs on corals infected with skittle D. In this section, we will discuss the procedures our team uses to evaluate coral reefs for skittle D. For performing assessments, it is always important to check that you have all the equipment needed to efficiently evaluate sites. Diving gear includes anything that you may take with you on a dive. A GPS is needed to take coordinates of each dive site with suspected skittle D, and it is important to carry a slate and pencil to count coral and take other data you may need. Another piece of equipment is the underwater camera to capture photos of the coral species on each site. So why do we do assessments? Assessments are carried out to determine whether the disease is present in a particular location, and if it is, to monitor its spread throughout a reef. The Perry Institute's assessments are done by enacting a rover diving survey, which includes divers surveying a site that is believed to house skittle D by swimming vertically above coral colonies two meters apart from each other in parallel rows. Once each diver is in the correct spot, they will count each coral in their central vision for 15 minutes and take account for their appearance. After the assessments, photos can be taken of the coral colonies that have uncommon disease findings. Besides assessments, we also do treatments. There are many steps involved in making skill D treatment that we will discuss along with treatment supplies and application. The main supplies needed to make a treatment for the coral are Basu B and amoxicillin. The Basu B is an ointment and essential core of the treatment that amoxicillin is incorporated into to allow the treatment to stay or stick onto the affected coral. Other supplies being used are a metal mixing bowl, silicone spatula, syringes, wooden popsicles, and clay. Now, how do we make treatment? We add basal B into a mixing bowl, small portions of amoxicillin poured into the basal B in increments to prevent lumps, and to make sure the amoxicillin is thoroughly incorporated. When the amoxicillin is fully incorporated, the syringes are filled with the treatment using popsicle sticks. With the filled syringes, small pieces of clay are placed onto the sides to prevent them from floating up to the surface when diving. The way we apply the treatment is on the border between the white exoskeleton and living tissue. The living tissue beneath the treatment will die, but this will prevent the disease from spreading to the remaining living coral. Treated corals can still be reinfected with the disease. That is why it is important to continue monitoring the corals. It is also important to note that this is scientifically proven to be the most effective method to help prevent the progression of the disease. This stage also requires a lot of time and effort and extensive training to ensure that the corals are being treated correctly. Here is a short video of senior scientist Dr. Valeria Pizarro demonstrating how to apply treatment to an affected brain coral. We have come to the end of the webinar and would like to leave you all with a message. If you see something, say something. We cannot do this alone and with your help, we can track the spread of this disease easier. If you would like to report signs of Skittle D, please use the WhatsApp number or scan the QR code and send us a photo of the suspected coral. It would also be helpful if you can send the GPS coordinates of the site or show us a landmark in the area. If you do not own a GPS, taking a pin and sharing your location will be helpful as well. If you want to learn more information about Skittle D or have any questions, please contact us and visit our website at perryinstitute.org and follow or subscribe to all of our social media accounts. We would like to thank all of our sponsors for the generous support they have shown and continue to show for our project. Finally, we would also like to thank everyone for their time and interest in learning more about stony coral tissue loss disease. It was a pleasure sharing this information 
and we hope you take the time to look at more of our webinars, infographics, or any other reports that we create. Enjoy the rest of your day.